Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking to you about how you can deploy Cloud Memory Store for Redis on GCP at any scale for your application's needs, with an emphasis on higher scale use cases. I'm Matt Geerling, and I'm a product manager on the Cloud Memory Store team. I'll assume that most of you are already familiar with Cloud Memory Store. For those of you who are less familiar, here are some highlights. Cloud Memory Store is a managed cache offering on GCP where users can deploy a Redis or Memcache instance with a single button click. Memory Store is fully managed and open source compatible, which makes migrations easy. Memory Store also provides the security, compliance, monitoring integration, and support experience that is typical of a GCP managed service. Today, we'll specifically focus on how to scale your Cloud Memory Store for Redis deployment. Scaling vertically is often the first choice for Cloud Memory Store users who are looking to respond to growing application scale needs. When deploying an instance, you select the memory allocated to the instance. This will dictate the instance's capacity tier. As the capacity tier increases, so does the network throughput and IO threads associated with the instance. This means that increased performance comes with larger instances, and larger instances are capable of supporting hundreds of thousands of QPS. You can get an idea of the relative throughput scaling from the graph on the right side of this slide. Scaling vertically is simple and can be done from the UI or from the command line. For use cases that require more throughput than a standard tier instance provides, Memory Store does offer horizontal scaling for read requests via the read replicas feature. Read replicas are supported for instances using the M2 or higher capacity tiers and can instantly multiply your instance's read throughput by a factor of however many read replicas you choose to provision. Today, we support up to five read replicas per instance, with the replicas being evenly spaced across the availability zones where your memory store instance is deployed within the same region. While vertical scaling and read replicas can cover a great deal of use cases, these strategies do have hard limits when it comes to key space size and write throughput. For use cases with these requirements, client-side sharding is a popular strategy employed by many of the largest cloud memory store customers. With client-side sharding, the entire key space is subdivided across multiple independent cloud memory store instances. These individual instances are typically referred to as shards of the key space. A new shard is created as the key space size grows or the right throughput needs call for it. The client is aware of the sharded architecture and knows which shard to route its queries to, depending on which specific key it's looking for. We have an illustration on the right side of the slide to demonstrate this. In this example, we've sharded our key space across two memory store backend instances. Instance number one contains keys one to 1,000. Instance number two contains keys 1,001 to 2,000. If our application is looking for key number 500, it will be routed to instance number one. If we're looking for key 1500, we'll be routed to instance number two. But how does this routing work? Well, there are two major ways that you would implement client-side sharding. The first is by embedding the mapping of keys, which is often referred to as the shard map, within your application. When the application performs a command, the application code will check its shard map and dictate which shard the command is performed against. This can work well if the key space can be easily segmented across application functions. However, if you need to add or remove shards or rebalance your key space, it will require application changes, which can be both painful to develop and roll out. The second strategy employs a proxy that supports the Redis protocol. The proxy is configured to be aware of the various memory store backend shards and is deployed alongside your application. This deployment is typically done in a sidecar fashion, whereby the application and proxy live alongside each other as separate containers on the same VM or in the same Kubernetes pod. The proxy is aware of the shards and maintains the shard map for you, so the application does not need to be changed at all. This does add CPU overhead to whatever resource is hosting the application, but this overhead is typically deemed favorable to application changes or re-architecture. Our team recently published a blog demonstrating how client-side sharding can be done with the help of the Envoy proxy. Envoy supports the Redis protocol in a great deal of the Redis command library. I'm going to walk through the blog content today with a live demo. 
Before we get started, let's talk about the architecture in more detail. We'll be using a series of individual Cloud Memory Store backends. Uh, we're choosing Redis standard. So we're choosing Cloud Memory Store Redis for standard tier as our backend, so that we get our key space replicated for high availability. We'll deploy our client application and proxy as containers on a single Google Compute Engine virtual machine. We've chosen Envoy as our proxy of choice for this architecture. Envoy is an open source network proxy designed for service-oriented architectures. Envoy supports many different filters, which allow it to support network traffic from many different software protocols, including Redis. In place of the application, we'll be using MemTier Benchmark, which is a popular open source utility for benchmarking caches like Redis. We can use this to quickly pre-populate and generate simulated traffic against our memory store backend to just demonstrate how simple client-side charting can be. You'll ultimately want to plug in your actual application when you uh, go through a proper implementation. Let's begin. To start our demo, I've gone ahead and opened up the Google Cloud Console, and we're gonna start by creating a series of Cloud Memory Store instances, which will serve as our backend shards. Uh, for the demo, we're going to create three standard tier instances. If you haven't worked with Cloud Memory Store already in your project, you're going to need to enable the Memory Store API first. To create these instances quickly, I can open a Cloud Cell, se cell session, as I've done, and issue a command to create three instances asynchronously. You can see that the creation request has gone out. While this is ongoing, uh, I can actually start and create our Google Cloud Compute Engine VM as well. The Google Cloud Compute Engine VM will host our client and proxy. Similarly, I can do this via G Cloud. I'm going to specify the same zone as our Cloud Memory Store instance to ensure the lowest possible latency. For the sake of the demo, we'll just be creating a single client VM. In reality, you'll likely templatize your client to deploy in a managed instance group or GKE pods within your cluster. You can find all of the commands that I'm using today within the blog copy that is linked with this as well. I'm gonna navigate over to our Compute Engine page to see if our Compute Engine VM has already been created. I can see that it has. After it's been created, we can connect to our instance via SSH within the Google Cloud Console. We'll need to configure the Envoy proxy to be aware of our Cloud Memory Store instance, so we'll need to create an Envoy configuration file. I'm gonna do this with one of the built-in text editors of the VM. I already have a template that we can use to get started with our Envoy configuration. You can find this within the blog. I've pasted my template in. Looking at the file, I wanted to call attention to a few different key areas. First, we're using the Redis proxy filter, which, Envoy, which means Envoy will allow us to pass Redis commands directly to Envoy, which will then route it as we've configured to our Cloud Memory Store backend. Second, Envoy lets you specify a load balancing policy. We've chosen the MAGLEV policy, which is recommended for Redis workloads. What's important to note is that Envoy will handle the load balancing of our key space and the request for us from the application. The application does not need to be changed or aware of anything beyond the Envoy proxy itself and will respect whatever load balancing policy that we choose to specify. Finally, we declare a cluster. Within the cluster, we have a collection of endpoints. These endpoints will be the individual Cloud Memory Store instances. To do this, we'll need the IP addresses for the instances that we've already created. I can leave my SSH window and run a simple command to retrieve these IP addresses that we'll need to finish our configuration. This command is going to loop through all of the instances we've previously created, querying them, and just return the IP address for each instance. I'm gonna go ahead and copy over these IP addresses and keep them somewhere handy that I can easily access. 
and go back to our SSH window where I have the Envoy configuration file pulled up. Within our cluster, you'll notice that we have a series of endpoints. Each endpoint has its own address field where we'll be placing the individual IP addresses of the three instances that we've created. I'll go ahead and do that now. Now that I have each of our instances IP addresses properly specified in the file, I'm going to go ahead and save and close the file. After saving our YAML configuration file, we can use Docker to deploy the Envoy proxy as a container. We'll be using one of the officially published Envoy images, but pass in our own configuration. After it has been deployed, we can run a simple curl command against the Envoy stats endpoint to ensure that it has been properly deployed. Let's start by deploying the Docker container. Now that the Docker container has successfully deployed and run, let's go ahead and check our stats endpoint. You can see that there's not a lot of stats yet, but it did return properly, meaning that our container is, is running Envoy properly. From the same SSH session, we'll now deploy MemTier Benchmark to simulate our client application traffic. The command that we've just run runs 15 benchmark instances as separate containers that will generate load for five minutes each. You can find a full description of flags used here within the blog. After waiting for our benchmark test to complete, we can use cloud monitoring to confirm that the key space and traffic have been balanced across our backend shards. We'll navigate back to the cloud console and to the cloud monitoring page. From here, we're going to select create dashboard to make our own custom dashboard. We're going to use a line chart, so we'll grab that and drag it out to our canvas. It will start by pre-populating some CPU data for our GC instances within our project. In this case, we're more interested in the cloud memory store instances, and we're going to populate our graph via an MQL query, so we'll select that tab. Within the blog, you're going to find the MQL query that I'm going to use today. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that into our MQL window and run the query. You'll see that the query has a filter that allows us to return all of the cloud memory store instances within our project that are associated with this filter. And for each of these instances, it is going to plot the command calls against each instance and overlay them all on top of each other on a single graph. We can use our cursor to drag over this line chart to see the QPS at any point in time for each of our instances. What's worth noting here is that you'll find all three of the lines are very similar in nature as our request for load balance across each of our backend instances as they were being generated. That concludes our demo. To briefly summarize what we've talked about today, you can scale vertically by increasing your instance's capacity tier, which can be done from the Cloud Console. Read replicas allow you to scale to higher read volumes horizontally by adding additional replicas. If you need to scale writes or your total key space size beyond the limits of a single standard tier instance, client-side charting is a common solution. We've seen many users successfully implement client-side charting via the Envoy proxy without having to make costly code changes. We recently published a blog that walks through the demo that we just showed you in detail, which you'll be able to find below. You'll also find various links to our documentation, which can be helpful as well. We recommend walking through the blog on your own to see how simple it is. Thank you for your time.